So this last talk is going to be just a smidge more trauma. So trauma, trauma, trauma. And let's talk about modern or current management of pneumo and hemothoraces. And so we are going to borrow a chapter from our uh, internal medicine and pulmonary uh, colleagues who have really moved from automatic chest tube or thoracostomy tubes for spontaneous pneumothoraces to either observation, if it's small, or the pigtail catheters. And so we're not really putting in those big chest tubes anymore for spontaneous pneumothoraces. But what about traumatic pneumothoraces? Do all traumatic pneumothoraces need a big chest tube? Well, we know that our trauma colleagues are now starting to manage a lot of these uh, with pigtail catheters. Um, but can we even go beyond that? So why would we want to avoid a chest tube in a pneumothorax? This chest tube's in the wrong place. It's in the liver. That doesn't belong there. Aim too low. And this could happen to any one of us, right? We, this could absolutely happen to me. This one, through the spleen, into the abdominal cavity. That's not going to help that pneumothorax. This one's ho horrifying. This is in the LV. <laughs> this is a chest tube in the LV. So pretty gnarly. And so the complication rate associated with chest tubes is up to 30%. That's huge, huge. And so how do we avoid this and how do we dodge these? There are some studies in the trauma literature looking at the ideal size of pneumothoraces that potentially we could just observe. And based on older studies, it looks like 35 millimeters is kind of the magic number and the magic cutoff for observation of pneumothorax, of traumatic pneumothorax. How do we measure this? You basically take the distance between the parietal pl pleura and the mediastinum or the visceral pleura and find the biggest air pocket you can find on an axial image of the CT and measure it out. If it's less than 35 millimeters, that patient may be a potential candidate for pure observation of their pneumothorax. Obviously, we want to make sure that the patient is hemodynamically stable, that they're saturating well, but if they're doing pretty good, you may just be able to observe that. There was a retrospective study done in the trauma literature specifically looking at observation of pneumothoraces that were less than 35 millimeters. They had a cohort of about 290 trauma patients that they were able to observe who had pneumothoraces under 35 millimeters. And in this particular retrospective study, 91% of those patients never ended up needing a chest tube. And the remaining 9% that ended up getting a chest tube got it because of either worsening pneumothorax or a hemothorax. So that's 91% of patients that had a pneumothorax that were able to avoid a tube or even a pigtail catheter. That's amazing. So this is a traumatic pneumo that we are handling purely with observation. Now, what about hemothoraces? Can we manage hemothoraces purely with observation, so no chest tube. This is pretty wild, because ATLS is all about the chest tube in the setting of a hemothorax. Um, hemothorax also, chest tube and hemothorax, has a complication rate of up to 20%. So it's also not a particularly benign procedure. The 300 ml rule, which is a calculation that is performed by the radiologist to try to figure out the volume of the pneumothorax on a CT, is kind of the upper limit of what we can observe in pneumothoraces. And so we've set this sort of as the cap. In a retrospective study looking at about 300 patients that had pneumothoraces, less than 300 mLs, that were managed Purely with observation, the vast majority, so 75% were able to avoid a chest tube altogether. And of the remaining 25% that ended up having a delayed thoracostomy tube, their mortality and their complication rates were no different than the ones that got immediate thoracostomy. And so we can move forward with potentially a observation-only strategy, even in traumatic hemothoraces, as long as the volume is calculated at less than 300 mLs. What were the predictors of failure? Older age, 
more days spent on a ventilator, if the hemothorax was greater than, uh, or the pneumothorax, the hemothorax was greater than 300 mLs, so we really want to use that as our cap, and having a concurrent pneumothorax with that hemothorax. So, in your hemodynamically stable patients who come in with a traumatic pneumothorax that is less than 35 mm millimeters on the CT scan, or a hemothorax that is less than 300 mLs calculated on that CT, those patients can be safely observed. You do not need to go ahead and put a pigtail or a chest tube in these patients. You can observe them, or you can transfer them without, if you're transferring to a level one trauma center, without this intervention if they are hemodynamically stable. Thanks so much.